everyone, welcome to this video. Today with me, I have none other than Ernest from HLA Humanistic Leadership Academy and, to, and you have me, Jeddah, here at Coaching Change Lives. Very glad to have you join us in this video. We're going to talk about something really, really important, which is what we call the future of training in organizations and what it means for us as uh, speakers, coaches, uh, leaders, trainers, and what does it mean for you as in the organizations? If you're an HR practitioner, you are a leader in organization, a CEO or directors, how does this impact your decision making in the learning development for your clients? So before we go there, let, let me just introduce Ernest. And Ernest, would you like to share a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Thank you, Jedi. Hello, everyone. 大家好,我是 Ernest. 那我也是一位教授,今天非常高興,就是和Jedi在這裡分享一下 so what do you think about uh, the future of the training in the organization? Well, that's a really good question. So just before this call, uh, we, you know, me and Ernest was just discussing, I said, hey, a lot of things has changed in the organization. And with the pandemic, um, the whole landscape of training and development has changed. Traditionally, a lot of organizations engage uh, trainers, uh, training organizations like HLA and also Coaching Changes Lives for us to go in there to do some leadership work, team building work, um, maybe training on personal soft skills, uh, essential skills, communication skills, presentation skills. But that kind of training, it's no longer going to be the same moving forward. So we have seen a change, a shift across the years. So traditionally, people wanted to have physical training where uh, trainers come in there, we address a problem, address a need, we train and then we leave. But now organizations are shifting towards more of a digital uh, training where they purchase uh, pre-recorded programs and allow their, allow their staff and employees to watch those programs to learn. Sometimes they call this micro-learning, sometimes they call this uh, asynchronous learning. However, those are also things of the past, right? Yes, in fact, uh, micro learnings is also traditional learnings. It's not the future. The future of training has changed and evolved because think about this. If you're in an organization and your organization tells you, okay, you're going to use, you're going to use an app, okay, watch these videos, think about the video, reply on the video. It, it's no longer interactive. There isn't a human touch and human element to it. So the humanness of the training element is one of the key factors to making effective training, to making effective engagement of the audience, and to make effective change in a deeper level for every employee. Because the outcome of training is to really help the employees uh, to have the skill sets, um, whether is it uh, in, in the area of hard skills, soft skills, essential skills, and to really help them to integrate that into their workspace. So if the, if the, if the employee just looks at the phone, watch the video, it's very much like asking them to go and watch a YouTube video or ask them to read a, read a book. It's not going to work, right? What must happen is there's a new kind of training that must happen. It's what we call integrative training. Uh, and that's when we look forward to something really, really exciting. So I'm going to get Ernest to share with us as well, you know, what, what is his experience in terms of traditional training in organization and, and what are evolving? What are the thoughts and ideas that's changing also? Yeah. Uh, 互聯網的世界,大家可能看完一條片 当中能够找到一些,他可能从来都没有看到过的一些盲点,我们所讲的blind 
剔唔剔到 away 嗰樣嘢，又能唔能夠將嗰樣嘢咧 apply 到落去我哋日常生活當中，或者真係應用到喺工作當中呢？其實呢個呢，往往都係一個好大疑問嚟嘅。所以啊，喺、呃、未來嘅 training 呢，其實雖然話我哋有好多 video、好多其他嘅輔助嘅工具，但係更加重要就係點樣可以有更加多嘅 interactive， 真係令到人同人之間呢，可以連係起上嚟，而透過呢個聯繫呢，係有一個更大嘅學習同埋更大 impact。So, what do you think about、uh, the integrative、uh, training in the future?、Uh, because,、uh, just I mentioned, uh, uh, we need more interactive uh, uh, between the people or more connection with the people. Great, great, and, and in fact,、um, so. A lot of new technologies coming out to say, "Hey, okay, we're gonna you know engage the people by getting them to do simulation activities, games,、uh, getting them to move on the the, the apps and everything." Well, that may produce a certain level of、uh, measures, but it's not enough to really help、uh, individuals and in organizations learn, right? How do we know this? How all, down through so many histories and so many experiences,、uh, the idea of gamification, the idea of、uh, simulation games, doesn't really work for employees. Think about this: what are they most bothered about? What are they really stressed about? Right? Do they have time to take out their phone and then interact, type in, fill in, and everything? And if there's so many things to do,、um, do you think they will be doing it in a way of a learning attitude, a learning culture, a learning heart mindset, or will they just be doing it just to quickly get it and done with? Right. So as such, one of the things that must fundamentally change is the mindsets of the、uh, HR practitioners in the organizations and also organizational leaders. That's the C level and the and even the management level or the senior management level, right?、Um, they need to fundamentally change and say, hey, it's not about that sexy new toy. I think the idea of digitalization, digitization has laugh or or create a lot of fake news in people's mind. They think that oh, okay, I need to make training digital. I need to make this one digital.、Uh, this one、uh, we need to get everything all digital.、Um, if that's the case, then you might as well have the whole work staff not go to office. Everybody just work from home. Everybody don't turn on camera, right? Everybody just work through emails. But we know the reality is very different. That people and human beings crave for that physical inter interaction. They crave for that dynamic. Uh, response, what we call synchronistic uh, uh, exchange. That's why we call、uh, integrative training, where it's not just saying that okay, you know, it's fully on online or fully offline. We're gonna see and find the right balance for organizations. So what we do here,、uh, together with Ernest,、uh, Ernest and and me, we we work together very closely to help organizations both in Hong Kong, in Singapore, and around Asia,、um, to help organizations do what we call integrative training solutions. Uh, integrative training solutioning and how that looks like is this: we enter your organization, and this is what we do. We sit down with your team,、uh, whether, whether it's virtually. We have a call with you, bringing your people from different platforms because we know that many organizations today are across many different countries. As such, trainings might not always be practicable in person, right? So, what what's the next best we could do? Well, we could sit down with you. We can discuss what are your training needs. What are your learning needs? There are two different things, right? Training needs and what are your learning needs, and then we want to figure out the way the people learn,、uh, helping the people to learn better. What is the missing gaps of the learnings for every individual? What are the things that people must constantly learn, constantly improve,、um, and then we kind of craft and curate a set of curriculum that matches them. But this curriculum is not fixed. This curriculum is ever evolving. Why? So I give you an example.、Uh, one of the one of the traditional、uh, training has always been in communication, right?、Uh, how to listen better, how to、uh, have better communication with your peers. Now this is not something that's going to change. You have to repeat this again and again and again and again, right? So many people think that oh, you know what?、Uh, communication we learned before. Yeah, but there's so much more that we need to learn about communication because the fundamental challenge in any organization has to do with communication. Communication internally, communication externally, communication to the public, right? And that is always the 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 same issue. Communication has always been the issue and will always be the issue, which means that organizations will engage earners and myself to go into organizations to work alongside on a long term basis. Traditional training is just I come and I go. I just come for you know one two days, one hour, half a day, and bye bye. But integrative training is that we are engaging us as gig economy gig workers to come in, work alongside with you on a long term basis. We take one year, two years, five years. We work alongside you, develop trainings. We come and train because we are an external agency. As such, 
our trainings become more effective because we partner with your internal trainers, internal coaches, as external coaches, internal coaches, we partner alongside each other to work together to help the organization thrive. So how it may look like is we could have portions of the trainings that are uh, asynchronous, asynchronous. It could be short form videos, it could be articles, it could be a variety of things. So we target across the different spectrum of visuals, auditory, kinesthetic elements. Then we have a lot more that's physical interactions, which is virtual small group coaching sessions, virtual team sessions, where we kind of work with the teams to go deeper in their skill sets, uh, to work with them in terms of enhancing their communication skills or other areas of need, right? So that's the integrative approach. Then from there, we may approach it very differently. Sometimes we may have experiential uh, learning experiences where we bring the people outside, outside of the scope of traditional uh, uh, trainings and then really help them to experience. So what then happens is that the philosophy of it becomes a, a, a learning, helping the people to want to learn learning how to learn again. And that becomes something really interesting because if the organization can learn fast, then they can perform better. They can uh, react faster. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Ernest? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, now we're in the the way of learning, evolve,和一个partner的一个这样的形式。其实未来的training更加讲求就是怎样去令到个机构,他们真的一路可以持续这样成长,一个sustain到的一个 Uh,当他应用的时候,可能可能会遭遇到挫折,或者遭遇到困难的时候,可能往往就会,哎,不适合应对,或者我跟着应该要怎样做呢?或者很多时候就会显身到就是,可能应用到的时候呢,可能就会
uh, in really working along the, the learning and development of the organization teams, the employees, uh, and, IP, I, I, and you are running a company that is spread across different, organ, uh, different countries, right? Say, for example, you have a, a company that is in Singapore and you have a branch office in Hong Kong or maybe in other parts of Asia, right? We welcome you to engage us. Write us, you know, give us a comment or write us an email and say, hey, you know what, Jedi Ernest, can, can we have a talk? Can we talk about how do we help uh, your organization uh, to really succeed in their learning and development? Because this is critical. The thing that will make organizations truly succeed and, uh, and stand the test of time and to become more resilient is the ability to learn faster, ability to train, the ability to coach well, so that it will help them to reach to a greater level of performance. Mm. Yep. So, Ernest, any last words for uh, our friends who are watching this today? <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to share what you said. So, we're talking about the future of training business or the future of training world. So, if you want to have a successful partner, a successful partner, Okay, very nice. So until next time, this is me at Jedi here at Coaching Changes Lives and we have Ernest at Humanistic Leadership Academy. And we'll see you guys really soon in our videos on YouTube and every other platform. Give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share this with your friends or text someone in this video who will need to watch this. See you guys really soon.